what a good boy. Hey, you need a good brushing and a good combing, don't you? You're all stuck in the rain and made your hair all curly. So we're gonna fix you up today. Hi everybody. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to brush and comb your poodle in between professional groomings. The first thing you wanna do is make sure you have the correct brush and the correct combs. Now, not all poodle's coats are the same. Some are very fine, some are very fluffy, some are coarse, and depending on the length of your dog's coat, you can keep your dog short or keep your dog long. So using a comb and a brush would depend on the length of the coat and the type of the coat that your poodle has. And these are some of the brushes and the combs that I use on my own poodles and on my client poodles. Now this brush has bristles on both sides. This brush I use for mats. It's really good to get mats out. This brush uh, does come in a larger sizes and I really love it. It really does the job if your dog has mats, but if your dog is severely pelted or has severe mats, obviously you're gonna have to shave out the mats, but this does work. And it's by, I think I say it right, La Pooch. If you can see that there, La Pooches or Pooch. Anyway, it's a good brush. A lot of groomers use this brush and it does come in large as well. But this is my go-to brush when they have uh, mats. Now this brush is called a soft slicker. It's called a soft slicker because the bristles here are soft and you can see the back is straight. It's straight as a soft slicker. This is good for coats that are well maintained. It doesn't really get out the mats. It's a good um, fluff brush after you've washed your dog and you want to blow dry and brush. This is uh, more or less, I use this for finishing, um, but you can use it on a dog that's kept in good condition and a shorter coat. I find it doesn't really um, get out the mats. And it does come in smaller, or this is a medium sized one actually, if you want to use a smaller one or even smaller the size of this brush. But um, I use this one for even toy poodles. That way you get the, junk, the dog done uh, quicker because you just go you know, over the back, over the legs and you're done. If you use a small one, you're gonna be taking a much longer time. But um, it does come in three sizes. This is a, it's worn out actually. I think this is called a Lawrence brush. I'll put all my links down below in my description. If you're interested in any of these brushes, you can go check them out on my Amazon store. This is another soft slicker and I really love this brush. Uh, see how it's curved? It really works well, you know, you're brushing and the curve does a really good job. This again doesn't really get out mats, but it gives a really nice finish when you're brushing. I use this after I blow dry the dog and I brush them, but you can use it um, for brushing your dog on a daily basis. It just doesn't really get out any mats, but it's a nice uh, brush. It's by Chris Christensen. I really love it. The handle is nice and it's got a good, uh, you know, you can really hold this brush instead of the straight handle. Um, this is curved. You can see how you can hold it in your hand like this. So it's a good, this is a really good brush. I recommend this one. Now this is another slicker brush. This is a really nice brush. Look at the handle. This is for easy grip. I really like it. It's a newer um, style of brush. It's by Bass. You can see by Bass. It's, it's a beautiful looking brush as well. But the handle, that's soft. It's, it's wonderful. It's really good on your hands. And it is more of a medium slicker. It's not really a soft slicker, but it does actually get out some knots. It really gives, um, the coat a good a good brushing. I'm gonna show you when I use it. I really recommend this brush as well. It's by Bass and they have a lot of different other brushes that you can get, but this one is one of my favorites. It's beautiful, soft, and it does a great job. Now this brush is another slicker brush and this one is, is not a soft slicker. It's more hard and it's curved. And you see when the brush is curved, it does a really good job, um, you know, getting out the mats and brushing that curly coat out. I really like this. This is the Frank's Universal Brush. This is like an original brush, especially for the poodles that they've been around for years and years and years. And I still have them. I have many of them and you can still buy these. And this is an excellent brush for poodles. It does come in a smaller size as well. 
Uh, this is the bigger one. So I'm going to be showing you how I use all of these brushes. And this is just a plastic brush, but it has these little um, ridges here so that when you hold it, you know, it doesn't slip out of your hand. When you're brushing, it makes you, you know, give a good grip. Your fingers go right between the little raised, what do you call them, thingies here. So when you're brushing, you know, it doesn't slip out of your hand. So I really like this brush. I've been using it for many, many years. So this is the Frank's Universal Brush. Now these are some of the combs that I use and my favorite is this comb which is the original Greyhound comb. I use this every day in my grooming salon and on my own personal dogs. The tines are, are a little bit wider here and a little bit closer together here. At the end of your grooming session you should be able to go through the coat with this edge of your comb. It's finer tooth, it should be able to go right through. So uh, not all combs are the same. A lot of combs look like this, but they don't work the same because they use different metals and different finishes on the ends here. So you wanna make sure you get a good comb. I highly recommend this comb or any comb by Chris Christensen is very good. Um, so this is excellent. So be careful when you buy a comb because I've bought combs that look exactly the same and they don't do nothing. They don't even go through the hair. And then you have, um, you know, the combs, this is a really good, it's a honeycomb by our, how do you say that, Aronco, and um, all the teeth are the same width. This is excellent for going through the poodle coats that are longer, and it's a very nice uh, metal, very, you know, strong. The tines, they won't bend, and that's another problem. If you get a comb that's not... Um, you know, well made, the tines will bend and they'll break off. So you have to get a really good comb. And um, there's also this poodle comb. I'm not sure if this poodle comb is being made anymore, but it has the nice um, handle here. It's a honeycomb and it's basically a little bit longer. Maybe it's around the same, I would say. Yeah, a little bit different um, than the other comb I just showed you, but this is a nice poodle comb. It's more um, comfortable on your hand because when you're using this comb you know you got to hold it here and it might you know hurt your hand eventually if you use it for a long time this is more comfortable but there are combs that I'll put down below in my description that you can actually get a a wooden piece that goes over here I believe they're by Chris Christensen and um, yeah so make sure you really get a good comb you don't want to just get any comb that looks like this you want to get a good quality comb and this comb this comb actually I don't use until I wash the dog until I brush the dog this is a finishing comb this is by um, it's, I don't know if I say it right it's a mini this is a finishing comb and um, it is a little bit delicate so you can't go through dirty coat. I don't recommend using it today. But when you wash your dog, or blow dry your dog, brush your dog, comb your dog with the other comb, this comb is a finishing comb after you've done everything else. And I love this comb. This is like gold to me. I recommend you have different combs, different tools and um, you know, to get the job done. You can't just use one brush and one comb. It won't really work, even if you only have one dog. I mean, this is a beautiful comb, and um, yeah, I just wanted to show it to you. So let's get started on the brushing. All right, so I'm gonna get started to groom this poodle, and what I want us to suggest is when you brush your poodle, it's best to start at the legs. You wanna start at the legs or at the, you know, the feet and work your way up. You want to do the body, you can do the tail, and end with the head. I always end with the head, the ears, the top knot. I do the top knot first, and then the ears are always last. And if you leave a fluffy face, you can do the face last. Um, his nose is going to be getting shaved, so I'm not even going to worry about that. It's a little bit fluffy, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, so I'm going to get started brushing him now. All right, so he doesn't have a lot of coat. His hair is short. He got shaved for the summer, so it's not really that long. So brushing him wouldn't be um, too much of a task. I just got to figure out what brush will go through the coat. And I'm going to start off with my Frank's Universal. And what I do is I brush upwards. He's going to get his feet shaved, so I'm not going to really worry about that. But what I do is I do short strokes all the way up. And actually this brush is working pretty good, but I like to try another brush just to see if it gets through the coat better. Now this one's not too bad. 
But since he's all tightly curled, this one seems to get through the coat better. Now, if his hair was longer, I wouldn't be doing that. I would just be like parting his hair and brushing layers, which I'm gonna show you in a bit. But basically, he doesn't have any knots. It's brushing out nice. And I would go all the way up to the top of his leg. And once I think it's brushed, I take my comb, the wide end of the comb, and I go right through it just to check. Oh, see, it got stuck on something. When it gets stuck, you want to take your brush. And what the brush is doing is breaking up the knots. I never really take the comb and, you know, yank at a knot. That That's actually, here's the knot here. That's painful to pull, pull that out. You can, you know, work it apart, but a brush has so many bristles and that it's, it's a breaking apart. It's breaking apart all those, uh, you know, tight curly hairs and any little knots. So the comb is more or less for um, checking. And there's a knot there as well. I got that one out. So there is a knot right in here. And when you're brushing, don't apply a lot of pressure or you're gonna get red skin. So basically you're not gonna push, you know, really hard. You don't wanna be putting a lot of pressure where you're scraping the skin. That's not the idea. You wanna use just the around amount, right amount of pressure where you're brushing from the roots out to the ends of the hair. You don't want to cause redness on the skin. So there, and there's a few knots on the other side. And some little knots will come out with the comb. You just gotta use your judgment. If it's not gonna come out, you don't yank it out, it hurts. And this brush is really nice because it is curved. So basically, come here, baby. You know, when you're brushing, you're curving it up, right? You're curving it even downwards because that's the um, way you want to brush out like this. Look ahead, honey. Don't go to see. So I brush this one leg. But I'm going to check it with my comb. So I should be able to go through his coat with the fine tooth part. If it gets stuck, like it just did, there's a knot. So look how nice his coat looks. Now, uh, grooming your poodle, as I like to mention, depending on the length of the coat you, you want to keep on your dog, the more coat you want, the more professional grooming your dog will need. I have a lot of poodles coming every four weeks and eight weeks. If they come every eight weeks, they need a short haircut, unless you are an avid brusher and comber and um, as long as there's no knots the groomer can do you know a nice uh, clip for you but don't expect the groomer to do some miracle beautiful uh, grooming job on your poodle that's overgrown matted you know in a complete uh, a complete mess so it's not fair to the groomer to ask your groomer to undo all that uh, mats and everything that hasn't been groomed in like over two, three, four months, six months. They can't do everything in two hours. And um, they certainly won't, you know, abuse your dog. They will clip them short. And then you should go on a grooming schedule to have a beautiful groomed poodle. All right, now I'm gonna go onto the back leg. I'm gonna try my other brush and just see how this works on an ungroomed, uh, curly, coated poodle. It will make them look, you know, soft. It's not mad at. And what I've seen as well, if you take your brush and just brush your dog like this, like I am, and don't use the comb or don't brush properly, it looks nice, doesn't it? But it doesn't get the mats. It doesn't get the coat near the skin. So you have to always make sure. Now he's he's okay. He's nicely groomed. So there's a knot here. Um, I've seen it before where the poodles are long and the top coat looks nicely groomed. But you take a comb to it and it ain't going out. It ain't going through. So you have to make sure that you use your comb and you can go through the coat with this because if you just brush the top coat you know like that and he's got a long coat nothing's gonna happen it's all by the skin is gonna be matted and tight and curly 
So this brush is nice on, on the shorter areas, but I like to use it as a finishing one. This is actually not too bad actually. Because he has a very sparse coat, it um, you know goes through. Now I'm gonna try this brush here. This is another soft slicker. And the soft slicker, like I was saying before, will work if your dog is well maintained and the coat is short. It will work, it just won't really get out any knots. When you brush in the back leg, you can pick it up like this, where the dog's comfortable. So you see there's a knot there, so it didn't really get out the knot. And I'm gonna comb everything up. See there was knots there. So this brush will work if your dog's coat is not knotted and it's short and fine. All right, now I'm gonna start with the thigh area. This one's a little bit more packed in as you can see. So I'm gonna use my uh, bass brush. This is nice, it does get out the curls. Oh, you're gonna look so handsome. Mm -hmm. You're gonna look so handsome. So you can go up and then down again. There's also um, a term we call line brushing. His hair isn't long enough for this. Like I said, I'm gonna show you on a different dog. It's line brushing where you use your thumb and you hold up a piece of the hair and you see, you know, you see the line. So you're just brushing each, you know, section. You're bringing down a little bit at a time and you can see the skin. So that would be line brushing. You always lift up the, the longer parts. His hair just isn't long enough for it. So I don't necessarily need to do that. Let me just check with my comb. Yeah, the brush did a good job on this section. It's a little bit tight still. But he is dirty, so so this brush will get through the thick coat. And what I like about it is it has um, bristles on both sides. Is when this one is full, like you know, it'll collect dead coat. When it's full, you just flip it around, right, and you use the other side until you're ready to empty it out. So this brush, you can even use this as an overall brush. Just with this brush, be really careful not to push on the skin. This is the sharpest one, and this is could be dangerous if you use it on the, um, you know, the sections on the sections where their skin is a lot thinner, like where the um, the leg bends in here, all the um, danger spots on the dog, um, like the loose loose skin. You can actually cut the dog's skin with with this because the the bristles are very sharp and that's what makes it get through um, the coat really good so make sure you don't scrape the skin let's see if it did a good job oh yeah see that see how it goes right through i love that brush yeah all right so here is another dog with a lot of hair on the leg now with my uh, previous dog You've seen how I just brushed over top of that, right? Because his hair was short. Now with a coat like this, that probably is matted right here. You have to do it a little bit different. And what I'm going to do is use my left hand to hold up some hair. And this is basically like a uh, line brushing. Because the coat is longer, you have to see what you're brushing. Because if I just went over top like this, it looks good, right? But it's not brushed. Only the top is brushed and not, um, you know, in the, in the middle of the hair or, or near the roots of the hair, it's not brushed. I've seen that so often when people bring me their dogs. They look nice and brushed and yet they're matted by the skin. So line brushing is basically just, you know, making some lines and seeing what you're brushing. You can check it with your comb, what you did. 
and always hold the legs where the dog I'm just gonna go over top of it briefly just to you know undo some of the curls I know there's mats under there so always hold the dog to where they're comfortable I'm holding her leg to where she's comfortable I'm not pulling it or turning it in ways that she can't um, do it some dogs prefer that you hold their leg to the side they could have a um, you know a joint problem they might only be able to move a certain way so just do what's comfortable for your dog no no so now I'm using the matte brush just to break up some of these mats here and you can hear it too listen You can hear when it hits a mat, like it's louder, you hear the scraping. And once it's combed, you don't hear that anymore. Okay. You hear that? That's because there's mats in there. But when the mats are gone, you won't hear that noise. You'll hear the noise, but it'll be less. Like this part, listen. It's quieter because there's no knots, and you get to hear it's louder. There, so hopefully, you can see the difference between, um, you know, combed, combed out uh, pom pom and a non combed one. I know it's she's a black dog, it's hard to see, but. You can see how tight and curly um, the hair is and uh, how nice and soft and fluffy this one is. So the comb goes right through it, which is good. Check it with the other end here. And what a difference. It's beautiful, huh? Well, curly hair has to be taken care of. You can't just leave it go curly or it's going to get matted or, you know, get corded. But you have to, if you're going to cord your poodle, you have to know how to do it properly. Otherwise, they're just... Uh, mats right so look at that and nice and fluffy all right so now i'm going to do his body i'm going to use the frank's universal because he is really tight here and uh it's got a lot of body surface to cover this is a bigger brush well they're all kind of the same size this is the same size but it's flat and i know it won't go through on um, the tighter areas so what i do is i just you know brush the surface first and um, because he has shorter hair, it's okay to brush the surface like this. And again, if his hair was really long, doing this probably wouldn't do anything. He would just get the top coat. So brushing your dog doesn't really take long. I mean, if I wasn't talking, I could brush him like, you know, in a few minutes. Especially the body hair, because you just do a few strokes. And if you have a mini poodle or a toy poodle, hey, that would take you no time right so there shouldn't really be any excuses why you can't um, brush your dog in between grooming it doesn't really take long and you are bonding with your dog as well and so i'm going to try this nice poodle comb let's see oh yeah this is nice well see it's a little bit tight but this comb is actually opening up the curls yeah, there we go. Nice. Mm -hmm. And now I will try my comb that has a finer teeth. It's a little bit not back here. Okay, so now I'm going to use the finer teeth here and see if it goes through. Because just because this part will go through, it doesn't mean there's no knots. You have to check it with the fine tooth because little knots can slip through the width of these comb. The width of the teeth, I mean. There. I think your body's okay. Yeah. Now the tail, it does seem to be matted. I do see some mats, so he might not sit still for this. So I'm gonna use my matte brush 
and sometimes actually what I do is just to break up the um, curls here I will take my um, bass brush just to break up the tight curls on top this is not going to be taking out mats it's not going to you know go right to the skin I'm just trying to you know start off slowly just so I don't have to you know rip out those knots and you can assess the dog's fur just by looking at it checking for mats and that way you'll know which brush um, that you're going to be using if you can see the mats you're going to know that you need to use the mat comb all right so mats and when you split the hair you don't see the skin right do you see all this it's hair tangled up almost looks like webs i hope you can see that you see this and another way to check for mats if you get your comb and it doesn't go through you see that it's not going through that's not going to even come out I might, have to, I might have to cut it out well those are mats so this is a good spray to spray on mats it is a leave-in detangler and a finishing spray and um, it works really good it's almost like it makes it like, slippery so just spray into the knots and it'll help it come out all right so hopefully that'll help makes it a little bit more slippery but when you're brushing the tail there is a like um, gland here on top and if you scrape that it'll get really red so I usually try to brush you know from side to side like this instead of going on top because if I accidentally scratch that area it's gonna get red and possibly infected and always you can hold the knots with your thumb and your fingers so that you're not uh, scraping the skin there they're coming out okay so he's holding his tail this way so I'm just following how he's holding his tail because obviously he's not very joyful he's trying to move it out of the way but uh, it's gonna get done There. There's tails all combed out. So this um, spray here really works for detangling. And I'm just gonna check it with the comb. Yeah, you're good to go. Now the tail, the tail does get matted easy and so do the ears. So you always wanna make sure you brush the tail and the ears. All right, so now I'm just gonna lift up his head See, I lift up his ears. His hair is really short, so I can just do a quick brushing like this. There, you're good to go, huh? All right, I'm gonna do your top knot. You got a hair growing right there. So I usually start from the front. You know, being careful not to scrape the eyes, obviously. You know, do a once over going this way. Now he has a lot of hair on his neck, on the back of the neck there, which I'm just going to brush on the top layer first. So I'm just brushing his neck and I'm going to check that in a minute. He's got a lot of hair here and I can see some knots so I'm going to get the other brush. So he's got quite a bit of hair back here and I saw some knots so what I'm going to do is kind of split the hair like that. I'm using my matte brush because it goes through the uh, you know the mats and the longer coat. And also I just want to mention when you brush your poodle, as you notice, they all have a like a, a bump that sticks out here in their skull. 
it's raised and it's almost sharp. So just be careful not to scrape that because it's not, you know, even with the rest of his head, you might bring the brush over and, and scrape that section. So I'm just gonna take my matte brush and go through this longer coat with short and quick strokes. Now, some people say, oh, why are you going so fast? You don't want to go slow. If you're going to go slow and pull, you know, if there's a mat, it hurts. If you do short, quick strokes over the same area and the same knot, it's not going to hurt. Okay, if you're going to go slow and yeah, if there's a knot there and I'm going to pull slow motion, you know, painful that's going to be. So short, quick strokes. And if you go really slow, or you can be grooming your dog for hours on top of that as well. But there's no reason to go slow, unless it's, you know, a puppy you're just learning, but... Just go in short, quick strokes. And the more experience you get at brushing, the more you'll know how much, you know, pressure to use, and what angle to go on. So I think that's good. I'm gonna check it with my poodle comb. I'll check it with my poodle comb. This is nice because see how long the um, the tines are? So it gets right through. See, right through the long coat. It doesn't really work. It works on the shorter ones, but if you got a longer coat, I see that's a little tight there. Um, it'll go through better. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's going right through. All right, so now I'm going to brush his ears. Now he's got very uh, thin ear hair. So I am using my slicker brush, my Chris Christensen's um, Curved Slicker, which is an excellent brush. And his hair is a different texture on his ears. It's more silky, you know, finer, thinner. So this brush uh, is fine for the ears and that's why I was saying you should have different kinds of brushes, different kinds of combs because you know each part of the body you may need, where are you going, you're going too low? You may need um, you know a different, different brush, a different comb. Beautiful, huh? Now, these kind of ears, you see how fluffy and thick they are? Different uh, texture. Now, she's actually a mess. She's gonna get groomed today. So I'm gonna use my bass brush on her. I might need to use the Dematter on her because she has different hair. And um, so that's what I was saying. Each poodle is different. They're different. They have different coats and it depends on the, the lineage of uh, and breeding that you got your poodle from. Some breeders breed for confirmation, like, you know, a show coat. Some are like field poodles where the coat is, you know, different. And, um, you know, they just breed for different, different qualities. Even if they all breed for the same quality, each dog will have a different coat. So look at how thick her ears are. That's a lot of hair. That's a lot of hair. Wow. See this brush is working better. She's leaning into the brush. Her head's a mess too. Everything's a mess. There. So that other soft slicker wouldn't have went through um, her ear hair. A little bit of knot here then I'm just gonna work out and yeah, when you have a knot don't just yank it pull it out you just want to do what I just did like you know quick kind of like picking at the knot and you're gonna hold it in your hand here's a knot okay because if I just grab that knot and yank it look it's stuck it's not gonna move it's gonna hurt you're just gonna rip it out of the dog's skin which is very painful so you're gonna Pick away at the knot. There 
There we go, buddy. All right. I've got to comb the other side now. All right, so hopefully you learned something from uh, my video on how to brush and comb your poodle. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you'll get notified of my next uh, uploads and you won't miss anything. So thank you very much for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, are you ready for a bath? I know, you're going to run away, aren't you? No, you got to get a bath. You do. All right. Thank you very much for watching. Say bye.